What is going on guys? Welcome back to the most underrated PC building YouTube channel. Sorry it took so long for me to make another YouTube video. In today's video, I'll be building a $550 used to price performance gaming PC. Which will include a Ryzen 3000 series CPU and a GTX NVIDIA 10 series GPU. Now let's get started. For the CPU, I was able to get the Ryzen 5 3500 off AliExpress brand new for $159.61. This CPU has 6 cores and 6 threads and is really good for gaming and streaming. I would definitely recommend you to pick one of these up for around $150 to $180 off AliExpress if you do not need the extra 6 threads the Ryzen 5 3600X provides. And since you are going to save about $50, you could use that extra $50 on the CPU cooler in order to get better performance and better temps when you overclock the Ryzen 5 3500. As for the motherboard I'm gonna pair this CPU up with, I decided to go with a A520M DS3H AC which means it has Wi-Fi on board which I was able to get for $55 off Facebook Marketplace. I would say this motherboard is one of the best price to performance motherboard I have ever used if you could get it for $55. But if you can't find one for around $55, then I recommend you to get a B450 instead. One downside to A520 is that this motherboard is not overclockable. But since it's not overclockable, I was able to use a cheap RGB cooler. And that cooler is the Vetro Darkstorm RGB cooler, which you are able to get right now on Amazon.ca for $20. It looks nice, yeah, but it doesn't cool the CPU very well. It's basically just a AMD stock cooler, but a little bit worse. So essentially, you're just paying for RGB lighting. But since I'm using an A520M with the Ryzen 5 3500, and you aren't able to overclock the CPU on it anyways, it's good enough. Now for the RAM, I was able to pick up this kit of 16GB of DDR4 memory running at 3000MHz, for $70 and I was able to overclock this kit of RAM to 3200 MHz easily. Now if you were patient, you will be able to find a kit of 3600 MHz 16GB RAM for around the same price. But regardless, 3200 MHz should still be a very good speed for Ryzen 3000 series CPU. Now for the storage devices, I went with a 120GB NVMe SSD and a 1TB hard drive which I got for $48 in total. I got this NVMe SSD off AliExpress for $23 and I was able to get the 1TB hard drive off Facebook Marketplace for $25. I decided to go with these storage choices because this is pretty much a mid-range gaming PC and I'm gonna flip it after so I think 1TB is a lot of storage for the person who's buying this computer and a 120GB NVMe SSD would be a really fast boot drive for the person. Now for the graphics card, I actually got really lucky on this deal. I was able to get this GTX 1060 Single Fan Edition 6GB variant card for 200 Canadian dollars. It's a pretty good price for what it is in 2021. And I definitely recommend you to pick up a GTX 1060 on the used market for 200 Canadian dollars because it's still a really capable GPU in 2021. But if you cannot find a GTX 1060 6GB at 200 Canadian dollars, there's always the 3GB variant or the GTX 970 or a GTX 780 or a 780 Ti. But at the end of the day, the GTX 1060 has the best optimization out of those three cards and it's more energy efficient. Now the power supply that's going to power the whole system, it's going to be this 500 watt 80 plus white unit from EVGA that I was able to get for $40 brand new. Although it is a 500 watt unit, I would not recommend you to buy this brand new for more than $30. If you have a $40 budget for a power supply, go for a 80 plus bronze or a higher unit, either used or brand new. The case we're using for this build is the NZXT H510 White Edition that I was able to get for $60 brand new off Facebook Marketplace. I also had to add an extra $7.30 on top of the budget because the case has a USB-C front port and the motherboard does not have one of those ports 
So I had to buy one of those USB 3.0 to USB-C adapters off AliExpress for $7.30. And I also needed another adapter which is USB 2 to USB 3.0 adapter. But luckily for me, I had one of those laying around in the studio. And since the case needs some RGB bling, I decided to put the three Luda case fans I had in my studio in the case. And I think it turned out pretty good. On top of that, the fans I put in this build fits really well with the Funko Pop I have chose for today's build. Now for the Funko Pop of choice, as you saw in the PC case footage, I decided to go with a Poison Ivy Imposter Batman Funko Pop that I was able to get off Facebook Marketplace for $10. I think this Funko Pop fits the fans very well because she is green and there's a hint of green in the fans. Now with all the parts out of the way, let's pull up a price tally for today's build. Keep in mind all the prices I was talking about for the parts are in Canadian dollars, and the US conversion will be on screen next to the Canadian total. Now with the whole system built and ready to go, let's get to the benchmarks.
Hope you guys enjoyed today's PC build guys. Now before I end the video, I just want to address that as you can see right here in a stress test of ADA64, the CPU went up to 80 Celsius max. So if you have extra budget, please get a better CPU if you decide to build a PC like this. Now with that being said, if you liked today's video, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you didn't, still give this video a thumbs up. Thanks.